Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number four from the 2024 AP Pre-Calculus exam. Let's take a look. Uh, I can tell that long-term, this is gonna be my favorite problem on this exam. Um, here are the directions. You should know them going in. Uh, one of the keys is uh, you cannot leave, uh, determine the exact value of any expression that can be obtained without a calculator, right? So you can't leave log base two of eight, you would have to write three. You can't leave cosine of pi over two, you'd have to write zero. Can't leave arc sine of one, um, you would have to leave uh, pi over two, right? So um, that's one of the most important things. And then you got to simplify algebraically. It's like you basically just got to clean up. Um, so let's take a look at the problems, see how they go. Um, g of x is e to the x plus three, and we want to solve g of x equals 10. So just uh, write that down. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. e to the natural log of x plus three is just x plus three. The right-hand side is natural log of 10. Uh, and then just subtract three from both sides and you get natural log of 10 minus three. I believe that to be the answer. Let's look at number two. Uh, solve h of x is pi over four uh, for values of x in the domain of h. So I don't know, someday you might have to really worry about the domain on this. At, at this point, I don't think you have to worry about the domain so much. They're just saying like, uh, there is a domain restriction that you maybe potentially should think about. So I'm gonna think about it a little, but uh, basically we start off with inverse sine or arc sine of x over two is equal to pi over four. I'm just gonna take the sine of both sides to clear out that inverse sine. Um, so we get x over two is the sine of pi over four. We know the sine of pi over four is root two over two. So x over two is root two over two. And that means that x must be root two. And there you go. So that's our only answer. Um, let's look at uh, the next part. Oh yeah, so I did wanna mention, I guess, apparently, uh, inverse sine on its own. So like the inverse sine of u has a domain of negative one is less than or equal to u is less than or equal to one. So when we do x over two, it's gonna be negative two to two. So as long as our answer fell in that interval, we were good to go. All right, now let's look at the next part. Rewrite j as a single logarithm of base 10, no negative exponents in any part of the expression. And then your result should look like log base 10 of the expression. It's weird to me that they're writing base 10, um, but whatever they are. Um, usually you just write log if the base is 10, but, uh, so I recopied this. W the way that I do these problems is anything that is, when you add between logs, it becomes multiplication within the logs. When you subtract between logs, it becomes division within the log. Um, also coefficients can become exponents. So that nine log of X, uh, is going to become the log of X to the ninth. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of color code it. So we'll have the log base 10 of, so 8x to the 5th going in the numerator, uh, because it's plus the log of 2x squared, that's going in the numerator, so times 2x squared, and then because it's minus the log of x to the 9th, that's going in the denominator, so over x to the 9th. And then we just clean this up, we get 16x to the 7th over x to the 9th is 16 over x squared. It said in the directions that the domain, um, I forget what it said, um, but we don't need to restrict the domain here. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's going to be our answer. Um, I guess technically X cannot be zero in this case. Um, whatever. I don't think you need to restrict the domain. So let's not, uh, part two, rewrite K of X as a single term involving tangent. This is how they get trig identities on this thing. Um, so we're just going to start off one minus sine squared is cosine squared. So we have cosine squared over sine, uh, secant is one over cosine. So we'll say times one over cosine. Now we can cancel a cosine, so we get cosine over sine. That's cotangent, and cotangent is one over tangent, or you could just know that cosine over sine is one over tangent. Either way, we're getting one over tangent there. It's fun questions. I like these. These are what I think of when I think, well, most of these are what I think of when I think of algebra two, to be honest with you, um, but the trig stuff definitely, I think, is a pre-calc type of topic. Let's look at the next one. So this one's the most interesting and I had to like think about it the most because uh, the domain part, I was just like, what is going on with the domain of this function? But then it turned out as, as I solved it, uh, I got my answer and then I just thought, can all my answers work? And the answer was yes, so they're in the domain. Um, so I'm gonna start off with uh, just a, a restatement of what we're doing. We're trying to find where m of x is equal to zero. m of x is this uh, cosine inverse of tan of two x equals zero. I'm gonna take the cosine of both sides to get rid of that cosine inverse. That's how I like to deal with those, just get rid of them. So cosine of both sides uh, gives us the cos, uh, the tan of 2x is the cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one. So now we have the tan of 2x is equal to one. 
So we think to ourselves, where is tangent equal to one? Well, tangent is equal to one at pi over four. You should definitely memorize your unit circle. Um, sines, cosines, and tangents, they help out immensely. So two x could be pi over four, but then what is the period of tangent by itself? The period of tangent is pi. So every time you add pi to pi over four, you're gonna get this to work again. So we'll just say um, plus pi times n. And then what we do is just divide by two. So x is pi over eight plus pi over two times n. And then we need to stipulate n must be an integer. So n is an element of the integers. And then I thought about it and was like, does this work? Like, yeah, this definitely works because every time I plug in pi over eight or pi over eight plus pi over two times n, I'm finding the tangent will be one and then I'm doing the inverse cosine of one, which is zero. So this definitely works. This is my answer. Um, that's it. I hope this was helpful and good luck.